Now, just like they talk on defense, we were talking philosophy on defense, our philosophy on offense. Now, I know this is a different day and time of offense. Everybody thinks you got to be in a no huddle, you got to be going 100 miles an hour, you got to be going this. We do do that. We do do that when it's convenient and productive. I'm going to tell you this. As I said before, our goal on offense is not to lead the country in offense. Now, if it happens, it happens. It's not necessary to always lead it in points. What it is important to do is lead it in what was best for our team to win the football game on offense. Now, last year, we finished 19th in the country in offense. Okay? We finished 10th in points scored. We finished third in points in the red zone. We finished sixth in yards per attempt, fourth in yards per rush, and third in overall in yards per play at 7.01. Our object is to be efficient on offense. It's the efficiency of what you do. Sometimes you've got to outscore somebody, you've got to go in no huddle. Let's turn it loose and go get all we can get. Sometimes you've got to understand as you get selfish on offense, you can hurt your defense. It works both ways. How do you fit as a football team, to me, should dictate your offensive philosophy. You may not be able to stop them on defense enough that you have to outscore, but you may have a great defense that you be efficient, and by you turn, and like I say, you being able to run, keep balance, and also, if you want your defense to develop, there has to be a physicality to your offense. Understand that. Even if you run this, now I'm not saying the spread doesn't have to be physical. You can be physical and run the football from the spread. But at some point, for their sake, you're going to have to line up and butt your defense in the mouth. And I say it all the time, the teams winning national championships, what's the one common denominator? They're all physical and can play great defense. And on offense, they're very, they can run the football and they throw it efficiently. They throw it efficiently. Now, again, I'm not saying you can't be. We were the only team in the country last year that was in the top 20 in offense and defense. We were the only team. And we ended up 12 and two. We felt less some chicken on the bone out there. Had a chance to, you know, six, eight, 10 plays, we could have been in that game too. We gotta learn to get there. But as an offensive coach and as a head coach, if you're that guy, don't be selfish. Don't be selfish as a coordinator. What is your head coach's philosophy? What is best to win the game? We sit and we talk about as a staff before we go into offensive game plan, defensive game plan. After we watch, we get our ideas. What do we think of them on offense? What do we have to do? How can we help you? And vice versa. Is this a game that we're going to struggle maybe to run the football? Maybe to create plays on offense defensively? Can you, we may have to take some chances to create some turnovers, to create some things that happen, and vice versa. That, you know, they say this week, hey, Coach, Jimbo, you know, we're good defense, but you know something? They're going to get a few points. They got some skill guys. There's some matchups. They're we better be ready to score some points. We have to be. You may need a trick play. We may need something here. We may need a fake punt. How you scheme your special teams, how you scheme everything. Make sure you're game planning as a team before you game plan as an offense. Now again, that's from a head coach saying that. But I'm telling you, as an offensive coordinator for years, that's the way I thought. And I was fortunate enough to be around head coaches who understood that. Now, what's become tough on offense, in my opinion anymore, is that what I was talking about, the multiplicity on defense is going on, whether they're in 4-3, they're in 3-4, they're in quarters, they're in three, they're in fire zone, they're in two trap, they're in two tampa. What all they've got going on what do you call? How do you, mix and, how do you mix and match your calls? Now, anybody said, well, we know. I've done it where I've had open calls. In other words, what I mean, open checks. If you see certain things, you immediately go to it. I've combination two play packages, three play packages, four play packages. But you know what? Not all the quarterbacks can handle that. Not all your guys can handle that. And when you're getting into play calling, which I think is the key to the drill, what I've found out 
over years. Now, when you're blessed, you can do whatever. You get experienced teams. But it's easier to teach one guy than it is 11 guys. So if you can get the quarterback who can handle it, and what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about on offense today is what I call combination calls or blind calls in the passing game. And what we'll do, and, and really it's calling two, three, and sometimes four plays within one play. And but here's the key. The quarterback has to know why he's going somewhere with the ball. Now, how much you give him is dictated by how much he can learn. But some things that I have experienced over time that, you know, and I say that my brother was a high school football coach. I know what he does. I know what he goes through. And if you spend the time with him and you get that guy, you can, you can get at least two or three things out. He may not get four or five, being able to go to all five guys on the play. But you can get it to where he can get to two or three. I promise you in what you're trying to do. Because it's hard to call a game. Everybody asks me, Coach, what are you going to call on this play? Well, they do, what, what do they do? Well, they do some of this, they do some of that, and they've done this on defense. Well, like I tell them, when I rub that crystal ball, sometimes that thing looks up fuzzy. I mean, it's like that one with the, you know, it's got the snow when you shake it up, got all the snow coming through it. You don't know. They on defense can do. So what I've, what I've found out over years, that's build the concepts where, where they have a chance to be successful versus all the multiple coverages. And when I talk about multiple coverages, I'm talking about three deep, two deep, quarters, and now it's gotten into, how much two Tampa y'all get? Y'all getting any of that? Uh, raise your hand if you're getting into two Tampa, if you understand what I mean by two Tampa. Y'all are starting to filter down into you. I mean, it's coming down and it's a little bit different. And see, really two Tampa, you're really not two Tampa. Two Tampa's cover three when you really break it down. Two Tampa is really cover three when you really break it down in essence of what you're trying to go to. Because what's the safeties are going wide and we'll draw it up in a minute. Mike's in the middle. Corners play inside leverage, right? Two backers run to spots. Well, that's three deep, four under. They're just cheating the free safety and trying to rob on how they're trying to do things. So how you attack it, and there's some ways to do it, okay? I want to talk about one route. Now, we can get a bunch of underneath routes. I can give you, I can give you, we can stay here till six in the next morning. And as Lord knows, I can draw up a route. I'll create one, I promise you. But what I like, excuse me, what I like on offense, like we talked about before, what did Jeremy talk about? Guys can run the football, but in the passing game, they want to give up less than five an attempt. Our goal is seven yards an attempt on offense. That's what we consider efficient. Seven an attempt. Now again, we talk about, and I, don't, I do it different than the numbers in college football are messed up. Could run yards and pass yards. Because when a quarterback scrambles on a pass, that goes on the pass yards. It shouldn't go on the run yards. That's not against your run defense. That's against your pass defense or your pass rush. A sack should not come off of run yards. It should come off of passing yards. So when we total our numbers, sacks come off our passing yards. Quarterback scrambles go on our passing yards because it's the passing game in which is involved at the time. And that's why that's one way, too, you can judge a quarterback's efficiency in the passing game and not get caught up in the run game and what goes on. Okay? But I want to create explosive plays on offense. So I'm going to give you a, a, one of my favorite, favorite plays. And you can tweak it and turn it in a, in a bunch of different formations. How can we use it in different personnels? How can we use it in different formations? But giving me a chance, as I call, to hit a home run. Now, when I'm calling plays also, as I think about them, is it, a good, is it, a first, is it only a first down play? Is it a second long, second medium play? Is it a third and short, third and long play? Where can it be used? Where can it be applied? We all have tons of plays. And I'm the, again, I'm the world's worst. I promise you. But where can it be applied? Now, can it also be applied where? In the red zone. And I'm going to give you a quick hint. I'm not going to talk a lot about red zone because we only have an hour today. But the most, we were 92% we were in the red zone last year. Eighth in the country. And we took a knee three times. If we hadn't done that, we'd have been fourth. We scored the third most points in the red zone last year. La Tech was one, Oregon was two, we were three. What I found 
with efficiency in the red zone, first being able to run the football is key. Make no mistake about it. Be able to run the football in the red zone. Got to. But two, taking your pass plays and your plays and keeping them the same, not creating a whole new offense and being able to tweak them to shorten it depending on how deep and how far you're out of the end zone. So your kids really aren't learning a new play. They're learning a new twist to the play. And I found out our efficiency and our production ends up going through the roof because they understand what they're trying to do a lot better than it's a whole new scheme, a whole new system. And then how many times do you actually get to call it? And how many times do you actually get to run it? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you ain't ever played quarterback and all them plays are coming in and you're going to make all those decisions in a game and it's a constantly a different play and a different thing and a different... I don't care who you are. You aren't going to be as efficient. If you can get comfortable calling things, it's like things you do. If you can get comfortable in that situation saying it, being around it, knowing the base scheme of it, then you can adjust to whatever situation it's being applied to. That's what we get wrong in football, I think, sometimes, is that we always want to create new and we don't apply what we have. How it's applied to me is the key by the situation that we're involved in, especially when you're passing the football. Because there's so many schemes and we all want to be gurus out there and think we created something. And I'm just as guilty as everybody else, I promise you. Like, I, I give you an old story like Jeremy, he was a coach Saban. He used to yell back here at me every day, you got that stick out in the ground, you're out there drawing him in the dirt. Pull that stick out of your pocket and quit drawing him in the dirt like he did in the backyard. I'd draw another one. But it's part of it, guys, and I learned it from playing it. I hated playing a quarterback and having a different play, different. Let's call something over three, two or three times in the game so I can get good at it. Let's call something six or eight times in the game so I can get good at it. I'll give you a route in here one time, and in the game this year, it happened to be against Clemson, I caught it nine times in the game. All five guys caught the ball, and we were nine for nine on the play. I didn't need a new play. We just kept, we kept executing it by the situation in a different way. But this play right here is a, is a play for us. And I'll apply it to cover three. 